please join me in embracing these thoughts, our thoughts, our prayers. Let us focus our thoughts this day on peace, harmony, love. Let us be grateful for this beautiful day, for these words and ideas shared by Reverend Don, for the joy of our music team, for the service of our sound team, for the service of our youth team, ready and willing to have youth join us. <laughs> Let our thoughts be prayers for the good of all. Please join me in affirming, and so it is. Thank you. Now, we like to do our honoring all paths, because we do. We honor all paths to spirituality. And the lighting of our candles of oneness today is Sharon. <laughs> We are an interfaith gathering, a spiritual community that honors all teachings and all spiritual teachers. We begin our ceremony that celebrates this oneness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths come for the one universal presence, which we call spirit. And let us begin. The Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. Shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of pristine spirituality. Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. Buddhism, honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling New Thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And the last candle is the healing candle of love. We invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anyone you wish to be included in this healing flame of love and light. Now that our flames of faith are fully lighted, we move forward into our celebration, realizing and reaffirming that all paths lead to God. Thank you, Sharon. And an inspirational quote this morning from Ernest Holmes, Science of Mind. We resist being what we really are we need to accept the fuller expression of the mind that is within us. For in its creative flow through us rests our entire future. The greater person that we are and the richer life we desire to enjoy. And then a quote by Brene Brown. Authenticity is the daily practice of letting go of who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. Thank you. Well, it's amazing. It's amazing today to be here and have all of you join us, all of you online. It truly is a beautiful day. And we do, we honor all paths, all backgrounds, all faiths, all lifestyles, and we're glad to have each and every one of you here today. My name is Ann Fleming. I'm the practitioner of the day. Just to go over a, a few things, we do have a few announcements. 
Uh, our office is closed uh, Monday, tomorrow, and the following Monday. But then we're open on normal office hours uh, after that. Um, then uh, the Fred Meyer Community Rewards. I don't know how many of you are aware or participate in that, but we, we do just get uh, a chance to have a contribution uh, every time you shop. So if you sign up for that, it's a bonus for all of us. And I think that's our basic announcements today. <laughs> and I do want to uh, uh, mention that prayer is our most important opportunity that we have. The practitioners and the minister, we honor your requests for prayer. And you have an opportunity to send us a prayer by the website, cslalaska.org, or there is a sheet of paper, colored sheet of paper, in the chair in front of you that fill out a prayer request and drop it in our box in the entranceway. Or there's prayer requests back there. And we will pray for you all week. And we really honor your request for prayer. Um, I believe that's all. And I know Reverend Don has a minister's moment. <laughs> Thank you, Ann. Big uh, minister's moment today. Uh, there is a big change coming up in our education department. Uh, certain classes that have been the cornerstone of what we teach and what we do for a long time are no longer going to be accredited by home office. Uh, so um, this takes effect at the in June of 2025. The classes uh, include, but are not limited to, foundations, power of your word, meditation is more than you think, um, from whence we came, and there are some others. But those have been really big deal for us for a long time, and they will be uh, no longer accredited. Now, I have been saying for several months now, wait, we're in the fall, we're going to have these new classes, and I'll have to tell you all about them. Well, <clears throat> I'm still waiting for these new classes, So, but they're going to be the classes that replace those. So uh, we uh, are uh, here with abated breath. <laughs> At our center, we honor all faiths, all backgrounds. You know, every week we light all these candles up here. It looks like a forest fire. We honor all of these uh, religions, spiritual traditions, ways of living. And I think it's important that we do that. But there are some things that I think are common to many, if not all, of these other faith traditions and ways of being. And one of those is that I think we recognize there is some kind of a power in the universe. Whatever name you give, give to it, God, Spirit, the thing itself, Yahweh, I mean, I could names and names and names, but it's some type of an amazing creative power. The word I use is ineffable because it's so big, so magnificent, so infinite that our mere words don't describe this thing that we call God. And this creative force has created this entire universe, everything, from the farthest away galaxy to the tiniest subatomic particle. And there appears to be intelligence within all of it. Yes, even within the rocks and the stones, there appears to be that particle of intelligence. And it would have taken something that is extremely intelligent, wise, to be able to create all of this. All of these myriads of ecosystems just within 
Alaska, that all of the different things, animals and plants working together to create this magnificent world that presents us with pure clean water and breathable air and all the things that we need to live until man comes in, but that's subject for a different sermon. But my point is, is that this creative force has made everything perfectly, perfect in every way. And if this creative force made everything perfect and this creative force made each and every one of us, then we must have that grain of perfection within each of us. It is part of who we are that there is a part of us that is the divine. There's a part of us that is that perfect thing. Emerson called it the oversoul. So if we all have a part of us that is perfect and we are at free choice, we, we have free will, we are free to do whatever it, and we recognize that this infinite force doesn't make mistakes, so who you are is not a mistake. This infinite creative thing that made all of everything did everything perfect except you. You're the one screw up. Uh. You know, or me. Oh yeah, I did everything good except old Don. He, he was kind of messed up. <laughs> or even mankind. Oh yeah, we did everything perfectly, you know, except that thing called man. Boy, I kind of louse that one up. No, no. We have that perfection within us. Today's uh, talk was supposed to be on imperfect practices. You know, we've been talking about imperfection all month. And today I was going to talk about practices. And so I had a sermon all ready to go. And that's what the blurb went out. And I was going to talk about our practices. But the longer I sat with that, the more it didn't seem right. And it seemed to me what I really needed to talk about is what if perfectionism isn't the goal. Rather than talk about our, our practices, maybe I ought to talk about the things that keep us from embracing our imperfections. Because we've all got them. So there are three things that I identified that, to me, keep us from embracing imperfection. The first is, the concept of duality. Secondly is that perfectionism narrows our focus. And thirdly, that perfectionism paralyzes us. So let's talk about duality first. And by duality in, re duality in regard to perfectionism is that we've only got two choices. It's either perfect or it's imperfect. Only two choices, perfect, imperfect. Well, we don't really know what perfect is. So pretty much all of everything else is imperfect. And we come to the belief that if something is imperfect, that it's less than, it's not as good as. It's of little use or of little value. And when we embrace this concept of perfectionism, it can lead to self-judgment, fear, and feelings of inadequacy. I think the idea of what is perfect is a cultural construct. It depends on the culture that you're in, on what, how we define what's perfect. Because it's different in different cultures. When we release our need to be perfect, we can liberate ourselves from self-judgment. These imperfections, these areas where we think we don't quite match up or live up to what's expected, don't define our worth. Our value, our worth, is based upon our inherent divine nature. Emerson's oversoul. That 
is the part that we can look at. Ernest Holmes said, false ideas heaped upon false ideas make bad matters worse. The whole confusion of the world arises from the fundamental errors of thought. Chief among those errors and the cause to a greater part of the others is a belief in duality. Is a belief that there's only two choices, perfect and imperfect. And I submit that there are a lot of things in between. It's not an A or B. It can be both. If you remember last fall, we did that whole series. I think I stretched it out over about six weeks of embracing both sides of something that appears to be opposite. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. So if we continue to look at this duality and we look at perfectionism, something that we want to attain or to do, we find that it narrows our focus. Perfectionism keeps us from seeing perfect imperfections. It creates the illusion that there is only one way to be. When we embrace imperfection as an integral aspect of our journey, we honor the divine wholeness that encompasses all of existence. We begin to see that imperfections are not flaws to be fixed, but unique expressions of the divine unfolding. By broadening our perspective and recognizing the divine presence in all things, including our imperfections, we open ourselves to a deeper sense of connection and appreciation for the inherent beauty and diversity of life. I told a story, in fact, I think I've told it more than once, uh, but don't ever tell, I repeat stories. But, I told a, a story of the leaky water jug. We had the water bearer, if you remember this story, and he'd uh, go down and fill both of these big jugs of water and then carry him on a stick on his back and carry him up to the house of his master. And he'd do that every day. But one of the jugs had a crack in it and it leaked water. And the jug felt terrible. The jug felt that it was less than, that it was imperfect. The other jug, it got filled with water and carried the entire jug of water, made it all the way up to the master's house and the master got all this water, but that jug had a crack and leaked. And by the time the water bearer got to the, the master's house, half of it had leaked out. And so one day the jug said to the water bearer, you should get rid of me. You should replace me with a new jug that will be able to hold the water all the way. And the water bearer says, oh, no, no. You see, you're perfect just as you are. And then as they walked, he pointed out to the flowers only on one side of the trail. And those flowers are only there because of the drops of water that you give them every day as I take it up there. And these flowers are what I use to cut and grace my master's table. So without you, my master wouldn't have those beautiful flowers. No, we need you. You are perfect. And I think that's a lot of what we are. We don't see the perfection within our imperfections. We, in our culture, define what is perfect. And sometimes it ain't so perfect. Third point, perfectionism can paralyze us. By letting go of the potentially suffocating grip of perfectionism, we create spell, space for self-acceptance and self-expression. We recognize that our imperfections are not limitations, but are opportunities for learning, expansion, and self-discovery. You see, our mistakes become our teachers. It's where we learn, it's how we advance. Through bracing imperfection, we invite greater joy and creativity into our lives. When we release the pressure to be perfect, 
we free ourselves to explore the experiment without fear of failure or judgment. We become willing to take risks, try new things, and step outside of our comfort zones. In doing so, we open ourselves up to a world of possibilities and discover the hidden talents and passions that may have remained dormant under the weight of perfectionism. When Edison invented the electric light, he tried many, many, many different times to create this light bulb, a current of electricity in a vacuum bulb. And he failed until one day he got it. Took him over a thousand tries to do it. And when he was asked about it later, how he felt about all those failures, he said, well, there were no failures. I discovered over a thousand ways that it wouldn't work. <laughs> and when we can take that attitude, when we can take the attitude toward life that, wow, I just discovered it another way that doesn't work, then we can move into that place where we can accept ourselves. Conclusion, what I want <clears throat> you to take away today. I had a whole section I was going to move from, you know, Brene Brown into this whole icky guy thing. But I, I think I'm going to wait and we'll do that uh, another day. Uh, for those of you who um, uh, missed last week, um, we talked about the Japanese um, philosophy or thought of ikigai, and I gave everyone a way to remember how to pronounce that properly, and it was after four days in the uh, woods above Talkeetna, uh without benefit of a shower, I returned to town and I heard somebody make a reference to that ikigai. <laughs> okay, conclusion. Embracing imperfection fosters resilience. Life is full of ups and downs, challenges, setbacks. When we can accept that imperfection is a natural part of the human existence, we become better equipped to navigate these inevitable bumps in the road. We develop the resilience to bounce back from failures setbacks, viewing them as opportunities for growth and learning. We understand that it is through facing and overcoming challenges that we truly expand and evolve. And so with this concept of our own inherent perfection, I invite my colleagues, the practitioners, even those from distant lands who are joined with us today, to join me in holding our congregation, those online as well as those here, those viewing later, to hold them in love and light and recognize that in all of the things that we may judge as imperfect, there is a pattern of perfection. And it is that pattern of perfection that we embrace. As we go through life, if we face health challenges, our prayers are not that there's going to be an automatic healing, a cure instantly, but rather that there is an awakening to that pattern of perfection that exists within each and every one of us, which may include a cure. If we are facing lack and limitation more months than there is paycheck, we simply know that we live in an abundant universe and that that infinite creative force is there to support us in every way. If we just open ourselves up if we are facing feelings of separation, separation from one another, 
feelings of separation from God, we can just step back and know the greater truth, the truth that we can never be separate from one another or from God because we are made of that God stuff. We are made in the image and likeness. We are made with perfection at our core. And so we just give thanks. We give thanks for the power of the universe. We give thanks for that presence within our lives. And now we just step back. We accept the good that is ours. We accept our own perfect imperfections. We let it go. We let it be. And so it is. Uh, is there, what else am I forgetting? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I think Judy is anxious to get out into that sun out there today. Are we going to have coffee afterwards? Yes. Yes. In the back. In the back. Coffee. Coffee. Anything else? No. Okay, we're going to do our affirmation then. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is. So as we close this morning's time, I'm so thankful for each and every person here today. For those online, it is an amazing day. And we just remember to embrace our imperfection, knowing that it leads to a greater life, a greater self-expression. And I have an affirmation for us today. I embrace imperfection. I embrace imperfection. I embrace my authentic self. I embrace my authentic self. And so it is. Thank you. So it is. <laughs>